You must change today so that tomorrow may dare to be different. And when you have fought back and regained your pride, when you have won some battles, when you are able to tell the stories of your heroism, when you can pass on to your young the tradition of struggle through examples of your having stood up for a better tomorrow, when you take control of our institutions, our media, our schools, when you maximize our economic resources towards our own benefits, when you stop making excuses, when you start standing with our mothers, when you stick it out with your families, when you start mentoring our young, when you start teaching us to be humane, then we can build a new nation of strong people. Your sons and daughters will no longer need to belong to gangs because they do belong. Our youth will no longer be seeking drugs as an escape because they would have outlets in our society to develop themselves. When you start setting the conditions for our youth to fulfill their humanities, then we will not be in despair. We will be whole, complete, and hopeful. My fathers, you must shape the vision of tomorrow. But in order for that vision to become a reality, you must rededicate yourself to a new beginning. Go back to your families. Go raise and teach your children. Go back and organize throughout this nation to bring about a better day for our people. Our enemies can destroy us one by one, but no one can stop. One million men organized and committed. Thank you. Thank you very much. This can be for many the first step in dealing with the priorities of effective self determination. We are here to gain the insight and become more accustomed to the distinctive purpose of self-determination. Dealing with the process of self-determination is more than words. Self-determination being committed, responsible, and in charge of one's life, one's family, and one's community of sharing responsibility for the elimination of the crisis that we face. There has been a war going on, a war between the devil and Almighty God. The devil said and continued to say that the Million Man March would never happen, and if it happened, there'd be a piddling few black men to show up. That's what the devil said. But this is a vision by Almighty God through Minister Louis Farrakhan, and I say to the media, I say to the devil, I say to America, look around, you tried to prevent this, in this battle, you lost, you lost big. Black America, you won big. And America should know that if black America has won big, then it will benefit you also. It is a success, I pray, that my multiracial and international friends will view this gathering as an opportunity for all men, but primarily men of African heritage, to make changes in their lives for the better. I am proud of all groups of people who feel connected with me in any way, and I will always work for human rights for all people. However, as an African-American woman, I am proud, applaud, and support our men in this assemblage. Let us go back home from this place, my brothers, renewed, regenerated, resurrected from the grave of violence and self-destruction to the resurrection of discipline and responsibility. Let's go home energized and energizing our churches, our organizations, free at last, to support our businesses, to pool our resources, to walk together, vote together, invest together, 
free to become new creatures, to call our women beside us, to share leadership, to share power, to send a message for those who think the election last year was a mandate for malice. We have a message for them. We're not going back. We're not going to let anybody turn back the clock. We marched too long, prayed too hard, wept too bitterly, bled too profusely, and died too young to let anybody turn back the clock on our journey to justice. God bless you, my brothers. Let us go home now. Let us go home now and work for that day when justice rolls down like waters and black will not be asked to get back. Brown can stick around. Yellow will be mellow. The red man can get ahead and white will be all right. God bless you, you beautiful black men. Brothers, let's get ready to go on up a little higher. Well, they said that we couldn't do it, but all the world can see that when we come together, when we rise above our differences, we can come and show an effort that no one can stop. Let us first salute Minister Louis Farrakhan for making a call that reached all of us and has shaken the world. Let me say this. When we hear the word today, when we leave here this evening, we are not leaving having had just a rally. We're going home to do some work. You think you see a crowd now, wait till we go home and get our sisters. You think you see something now, wait till we go home and get our mothers. The political story of 94 was the angry white man voted in a new Congress. Well, get ready, America, for the story of 96 when the enlightened black man brings in a new Congress. My brothers, what you see here is history, never been done before in this country. And it was done by you, the black men of America. Give yourselves once again a great round of applause. Significant people to our struggle. When they come and they join with us, we show them love, honor, and respect. Because it is very, very important that the signal that gets sent from this place today is one that says to the world that we are about now changing our reality politically, economically, and socially in this country. And it's going to take all of us working together to do that. So please join with me as Chief of Staff to Minister Louis Farrakhan to welcome to this podium our brother, a man that you saw this weekend on television saying the things that were necessary to make sure that this day would happen with the minimum amount of conflict and controversy. And we thank him for it. Brothers and sisters, help me to bring forth now at this moment the Reverend Jesse Lewis Jackson, our brother in the struggle of freedom. To Minister Farrakhan, members of the organizing committee, support committees, host mayor Marion Barry, preachers of the gospel, women, organizers. You've organized a great historical event. You've helped to unleash a great spiritual power of a great people. How good it is to hear the sounds of chains and shackles breaking from the ankles and minds of men. How beautiful it is to see the rejected stones stand up become the cornerstones of a new spiritual and social order. 
and to Minister Farrakhan and that host executive committee. They worked so diligently to bring this march into being. Let's give them a tremendous, loving, respectful round of applause. In the spirit of atonement, we pray to God to forgive us for our sins and the foolishness of our ways as we seek to do better and never to become bitter and let nothing, nobody stand between us and the love of God. The idea of a million men has touched a nerve deep in the hearts of people yearning to breathe free. Big meetings were never allowed on the plantation. We were always yearned for a big meeting. Today, we've left the plantation. This is a big meeting. Raw nerves of ancient longings for dignity has been touched. I wish that Dr. King Mr. Muhammad, Malcolm, Floyd McKissick, Medgar Evers, Fannie Lou Hamer, Daisy Bates, Bayard Rushton, Paul Robertson, Cleve Robertson, Mr. Michaud, Whitney Young, Clarence Mitchell, Roy Wilkins, and Thurgood Marshall could see us now. America will benefit and ultimately be grateful for this day when the rising tide for racial justice and gender equality and family stability lifts the boat stuck at the bottom. All boats benefit. Why are we here today? Because we're under attack by the courts, legislatures, mass media with the spies racists attack us for sport to win votes we attacked for sport to make money but i tell you today rabbit hunting ain't fun when the rabbits stop running and start fighting back here we are in 1995 trying to stop 1996 from becoming like 1896, the end of Second Reconstruction. Mr. Muhammad said, when we come into ourselves and know our true selves, we'll have our place in the sun. Fannie Lou Hamer said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. So Drenna Truth said to the feminist movement that she sought justice between white and black women Ain't I a woman? Martin Luther King Jr. said, when you rescued Rosa Parks, better than be walking in dignity than ride in shame. Why are we here today? Because we will not surrender. We will not bow. We choose life, but if we must die, let it be nobly and not like dogs, Paul McKay said. We come here today because there is a structural malfunction in America. It was structured in the Constitution. They referred to us as three-fifths of a human being legally. There's a structural malfunction. That's why there's a crack in the Liberty Bell. There's a structural malfunction. They ignored the Colonel Report. Now we have the burden of two Americas, one half slave and one half free. Lincoln said it could not exist. Why was the reaction to the OJ verdict so different? Because there were wounds unhealed. There is more vile and venom toward an integrated jury that voted unanimous than a racist policeman who prejudiced himself. Why did blacks and whites see it so differently? One man standing up, looking down on an apple, sees red and that which is delectable. 
Another man standing on the bottom looking up sees rot and sees worms. We all have a right to eat the fruit. None should have the obligation to eat the worms and eat the rot. We want an America where all of us are play on an even playing field by one set of rules. Why march? Dr. King said it was the shameful condition of the Negro. Today, it's disgraceful. Why do we march? Because our babies die earlier into mortality. Why do we march? Because we're less able to get a primary or secondary education. Why do we march? We're projected as less intelligent than we are, less hardworking than we were, less universal than we are, less patriotic than we are. And look how peaceful it is. Look at how brothers are saying brothers and sisters and moving with harmony. This is because, this is because it is our hour and Minister Farrakhan through making this call has brought us together as brothers. May God bless you and let us make the African connection meaningful. Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness to the divinity of all of his servants and messengers, and that which Allah revealed through them. Assalamu alaikum. The death that we have suffered now for more than four centuries, and we are gathered here today to say that we will bestow the gift and the blessings of life one to another. So standing to my right, we have the president of the National Medical Association representing more than 16,000 black doctors all over America who are doing their best to save the lives of all black America. Four years ago, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan sent me to Kenya to find out the truth concerning Kimron. Everybody in America and Europe said that Kimron did not work. But for the past four years, Dr. Barbara Justice and myself have been using this medication and we find that in fact it does work. To my left, we have Brother Demetrius X. I'm going to ask him a question. Brother Demetrius, in 1992, what was your HIV status? Positive. Brother Demetrius, in 1995, after having three years of treatment with alpha interferon, what is your HIV status? Negative. All praise is due to Allah. We continue to push for reparations and we continue to demand reparations now. We must continue to support organizations like the new African People's Organization under the leadership of Chokwe Lumumba, who have assumed responsibility for participating in the movement to free all political prisoners like Mumia Abul Jamal, whose son is here today, Geronimo Pratt. Suni Ali Kolo and many, many others who are locked up in the brutal penitentiary of this country. We must continue to support the work of the All African People's Revolutionary Party and their leader, Kwame Toure, who has assumed responsibility for struggling to fight for a free and independent Africa that is united and free from European domination. The scriptures say that there is a time for everything. And I think that we could say there is a time for us to feel the strength that we know there is in our African-American men. There is a time today for all of us to do all that we can to improve life for those who need it the most. The civil rights games that we thought were ours somehow are proving more tentative. And we find that many of
of our young men and young women who went to jail singing We Shall Overcome have found that they have rights, but they do not have the opportunity nor the economic position from which to pay the check. So today, let me say also that those who have benefited from doors that have been opened through the efforts of persons like that sparked by Rosa Parks somehow have forgotten how those doors got open. And I think the time has come for those who have made it to lift, take the time to help lift the bottom. You today are one in two million. And you have a task that is important and that we all wait to see what happens after today. This is the time, as the scriptures say, there is a time for everything. This is a time to reaffirm our traditional family values, our emphasis on self-help, on hard work, on valuing education, on strong kinship ties, and on the extended family and the partnership of men and women. This is a time for all of us to help create in our homes and in our communities violence-free zones so that our children can grow. For all for one, one for all, there's no way we'll reach our greatest height unless we heed the call. Me for you, you for me. There's no chance of world salvation unless the conversation's peace. Staring right at 2018 As if mankind's atrocities to man has no history But just a glance at life in 2000 BC We find traces of man's inhumanity to man There's no history mystery all for one, one for all. There's no way we reach our greatest side unless we heed the call. Me for you, you for me. There's no chance of well salvation unless the conversation's peace. I love you, and God, God bless you. Give it to him, brothers. The uh, legendary Stevie Wonder, give him a hand, brothers. Beating on the women, it ain't gonna happen no more. Killing black brothers, it ain't gonna happen no more. We're tired of the killing. It's gonna stop, it will stop, and it must stop. I'm going to let my brother from D.C. come up and address it further. Peace. Assalamu alaikum. I am Brother Raheem Jenkins of the Righteous Men's Commission. On this day, a perfect day that God has granted us, from this day forward, we shall no longer consider ourselves as gangs from New York to Los Angeles, California. From this day forward, we are now nations. It is nation time again in America. We seek your forgiveness for allowing your babies to lie in the street with that yellow tape draped around them. We seek your forgiveness, black woman, for not being present for those six-week checkups, those PTA meetings and for mistreating our most precious jewel, you black woman. This day, we reconcile and atone before God. Black man, I'd like to speak to my brothers out here from all the way from New York to Los Angeles, as I represent South Central Los Angeles on the West Coast, come a thousand miles. I'd like to see some fences in there as we sail on the West Coast. That's right. Black man, can you hear me? I can't hear you, black man. 
I can hear you in concert. Black man, can you hear me for the spirit of the long live the million man march? Black man, I come to you with much love as we brothers on the West Coast made peace. Me, myself, I was taking lives, but now I'm saving lives. And for all you guys out there, it's black men that knocked us, told us we was thugs, hoodlums, menace to society, that we have tattoos, when beat nothing in life, you was wrong. Because we standing up here, we're not with this, or not with that, but with this. So black men, I say for you guys, out of my heart and before I go, Young brothers, let me hear you say this one time. Keep the million man march alive, young brothers only. Go ahead. In the name of God, the beneficent and most merciful to all praises are all due. I'd like to greet you brothers by, with the greeting word of the peace of Assalamu alaikum. My name is Brother Dawi Sherrells. I'm out of the Jordan Dale Housing Project Developments in Watts, California. We're the one who accepted the peace treaty that took effect across the city, across the nation. And we bring forth our, 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 we bring forth our services from state to state. And we hope that you brothers can challenge us and be successful as we was in the service of peace. Peace. You got to tell where you're from. How's you doing? My name is Percy Harris. I represent the west side of Los Angeles, California. I'd like to say to you young brothers out there, we standing right here to atone to everybody today. But what about tomorrow? When you go home, I challenge each and every one of y'all, tell the young brothers, put down the guns, put down the drugs, and pick up their lives. Peace. Everybody should be a mad dad. If my people are called by my name, Jama themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Good morning, my brothers. Asalaamu Alaikum, my brothers. Welcome to Washington. I want to thank God for this day, a day we've never seen before. It's a day like no other before. It's a day we've always longed for. It's a day of hope, of spirituality, and personal resolve. It's a day full of the faith that the dark has taught us, full of the hope that the present has brought us. We're producing in our own experience, or we believe in our souls, we're fired up and ready to go. We're fired up and ready to go. My brothers, my brilliant, beautiful black brothers, I wish you could see as I see you now. From here to the Capitol, to Lincoln Memorial, over a million black men coming together, united, strong, and determined. the U.S. Capitol building, as I face westward towards the White House, let us remember that in the Bible there is a saying where there is no vision, the people perish. In this instance, the vision for the Million Man March came directly from God himself. In other words, it was God-inspired and God-led and represents God's plan. Whether we call God Jesus Christ, Yahweh, Jehovah, Allah, or just God, He's God. I am here to tell you I know firsthand God's power, God's grace, and God's redemptive love. God took me from the mountaintop to the valley and back to the mountaintop again. Look at me now. Look at me now. I've come back stronger and wiser than ever before. If God can do that for me, he can finally do it for you. Rise up, black people, and be strong. Let God move you and take you to higher heights. 
Forward ever, backward never. Forward ever, backward never. Forward ever, backward never. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. March on, black men. March on, black men. Move on, black men. Thank you, Honorable Mayor Marion Barry, the host mayor of this city. We waited a long time. I know who you are waiting for. We all want to hear from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And we're going to bring him right up. Part of this holiday of atonement and reconciliation. From the very beginning, we have said that we want black men to take a greater responsibility for the uplift, for the nurture, and for the care of our families and our communities. While it will be a great honor for me to present the Honorable Minister Farrakhan, I'm going to introduce his son to do that. And before bringing his son, who is the Assistant Supreme Captain of the Nation of Islam, I want to say that there's just one thing I want to lay to rest. Go ahead. Prior to this day, there was a whole lot of speculation about who was calling this march. And before our brother comes, I want to just clarify to the world that God called this march through nobody else but the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. There has been an attempt to separate the message and the magnitude of this march from the messenger. We are not going to let that happen. This is a march for and by black men, supported by black women, supported by black youth, black students, the black community, black church, black mosques, black fraternities. I want to thank the Panhandle Council, and particularly the Phi Beta Sigma fraternity, for giving us their national headquarters for the national headquarters of the Million Man March. When you see one million men standing, and in fact now we are told we have more than, we have almost two million standing, that just didn't happen. It took a lot of people organizing, a lot of people working together to make this happen. And this is not just a one day event. We're going to continue to march. When we get back home, we're going to continue to organize. When we get back home, we're going to continue to mobilize. When we get back home, we're going to register 8 million unregistered eligible black voters. When we get back home, and when we get back home, never again are we going to allow anybody outside of the black community to tell us who we can meet with, when we can meet, and what we meet about. Never again. And so, sisters and brothers, it gives me great pleasure and great honor to present to you our brother, a strong soldier, a strong black man, the assistant supreme captain of the fruit of Islam, brother Mustafa Farrakhan. Let's hear it for our brother.
As-salamu alaykum. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. And I bear witness that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is his true servant. And I further bear witness that Minister Louis Farrakhan is his divine home and my children. We have been the brunt of a whole lot of attacks. And those of you who know the plight of my father knows that whenever any black man is in trouble, he always come to your aid. Never be ashamed to stand up and say that Farrakhan is a friend of the black man. And I want all and I challenge all of the leaders that when you are asked by your enemy and those who oppressed us, my father is not a bigot. He's not a racist. He is not an anti-Semite. And we have the history in our archive that will prove everything that I'm telling you. So, from the president on down to everybody who's under him, Farrakhan is in your midst today. You don't have to think about what he said or listen to anybody about what he said. Call him yourself and ask him what he said. I present to you the man that God has given this vision to. For without the vision, the people will perish. And I say to you that my father is here to speak to you. So listen to him very carefully. I bring to you my leader, my teacher, my guide, my father, your brother, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. <laughs>